Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include EU laws threaten to kill off retail bonds. Verhofstadt is barking at the moon, says fellow liberal Balkenstein. Tiger of Eastern Europe is waking up, Romanian PM. Annual report from the Council to the European Parliament on the common foreign and security policy. Plus, Britain's EU contribution to jump by £10 billion as taxpayers carry burden of ailing Eurozone. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, investors attracted by the generous fixed incomes offered by a new type of bond have been warned that the market may dry up because of excessive regulation from Brussels. Bonds have traditionally been intended for big city institutions, but a recent innovation, retail bonds, has seen them offered to private investors. At a time of low interest rates and volatile stock markets, many have been attracted to these bonds, some of which pay interest of as much as 7.5%. Another benefit which is not available from bond funds is that with retail bonds you get your money back on a fixed date. Investors happy to hold until they can ignore any ups and downs in the price in the interim. Many household names, including National Grid, Tesco Bank and Seven Trent have launched retail bonds in recent years and they are traded on the London stock market so investors can buy them from stockbrokers. Now, this is a clever strategy that enables fund managers and investors to generate sensible investment returns. But more importantly for the EU project, it helps relieve bond market pressure on interest rates, which is critical. As we've been reporting, when interest rates rise, and that must at some point occur, many countries, including the UK, are so weighted down with debt, they will simply be unable to meet the repayment obligations. The Dutch liberal politician and former EU commissioner Fritz Bolkenstein has launched a scathing attack against Guy Verhofstadt, who leads the liberal and pro-European ALDE group in the European Parliament, highlighting tensions within the liberal family ahead of next year's EU elections. Verhofstadt and his fellow European federalist supporters are a greater danger to the European Union than Eurosceptics, Bolkenstein said in a recent interview. Now, the key information in this report is this notion of European Federalist. What that means precisely is those members of the European Parliament that wish to see the nation-states abolished and assimilated into a federal Europe, consisting of hundreds of regions. Already the UK has been carved up into regions and has been accepted without question by the civil services. Drive into Exeter today and you'll see the signs, Exeter, Regional Capital which means the capital of European Union region UKK. And who has authority and legislative control over that region? The UKK Regional Assembly. And who elects the Assembly's members? No one. They are appointed by the EU. Make no mistake, my friends, the EU is absolutely not just a single economic trading bloc. It is a complete governance system within which you have no say. Romania's economy is seeing the best growth in the entire European Union, and the country is ready to join the Eurozone, the country's Prime Minister Victor Ponta told CNBC on Monday, despite concerns that corruption and lack of structural reform are still holding the country back. Romania is keen to cooperate with reform agendas demanded by international lenders, which have supported the country through the financial crisis. It hopes to join the single currency, despite the euro area's currently unappealing growth prospects. Speaking to CNBC in Bucharest, Prime Minister Victor Ponta said his country had to be absolutely prepared to join the eurozone in terms of economic figures, inflation and the labour force. Now, Once again, a little sleight of hand here with Mr Ponta's statement. It's that little word inflation in that statement. Joining the euro will absolutely result in significant inflation for the Romanian people. Also of note is the use of the word tiger. 
Remember the Celtic tiger in Ireland as it went through its accession process? Well, frankly, it's not a tiger, unless that furry animal printed on the front of Mario Draghi's credit card is a tiger. The EU strategy is precisely that of the economic hitman. See our video library or Google for John Perkins for information. Now, fueling an initial boom, but one that comes with strings attached. That leaves the countries in hock to the EU and massively in debt. Ireland's Tony the Tiger moment was completely fuelled via debt-based housing bubble, driven by infrastructure funding from the EU. Mark my words, the same fate lies ahead for Romania. Due to the structural changes which transformed the global order in the first years of the 21st century, the report calls for a fresh approach to shaping a new multipolar world order that is inclusive and based upon the rule of law, democracy and the value of human rights. My word, that sounds like something straight out of the book of Revelation. Now I have highlighted this as it comes from our legislative research team. This report is talking about the common EU foreign and security policy. Does that not strike you as a bit of an odd requirement for a common marketplace? But let's skip through the subheadings to get an idea of what this report is all about. Defend the interests of the European Union. Building a new comprehensive approach to the EU's foreign policy. Providing leadership and coherence in EU foreign policy. The establishment of clear priorities and strategic guidelines for the common foreign and security policy. And a framework for assessing existing strategic partners and developing new partnerships, including with international and regional organisations. A roadmap for making progress on important innovations of the Lisbon Treaty and tackling of the acute problems in common security and defence policy decision making. Or need I say any more, if ever anyone needed any convincing admission that the goal of the EU is the completion of a supreme state governed by an elite commission, then this is it, folks. I cannot stress this highly enough. We truly are absolutely having freedom and democracy stolen from right under our noses, and it infuriates me that these deceivers are building this tyranny right before our eyes. So let me say this on record right now. As long as I draw breath, I will always stand against this tyranny. I will never accept subservience to the state, and I will never give up my freedom. I will stand on the hilltops and shout in the streets, but I will never surrender. Britain is to pay an extra £10 billion to the European Union over the next five years. The fiscal watchdog has said as taxpayers here carry the burden of the struggling Eurozone. Britain will give an extra £10 billion to the European Union because of the weakness of struggling Eurozone economies it has emerged. The British contribution to the EU will rise dramatically from £30 billion to £40 billion over the next five years, the Office for Budget Responsibility said. And it includes a surprise £2.2 billion jump in funding to £8.7 billion this year. <laughs> well, there you go, folks. I see Cabbage Patch Cameron and MC Cleggy have been about as effective as a chocolate fire guard at ensuring that Britain's contribution to the EU should not be increased. That's right, friends. I'm sure you remember all the fuss over all the all-night discussions trying to reach an agreement about the EU budget and David Cameron coming back all triumphant and reassuring in the papers. What a lot of old tribe. Today in our video library, I would like to recommend another channel for your attention. Earlier this year, I came across a group based in Plymouth called the UK Column. You can find their website at ukcolumn.org. Now, we like to be careful before we make recommendations about other freedom and apparently democratic sites because you never quite know who is behind them or what their agenda might be. Take 38 Degrees as an example of public deception. But this team appear very genuine. Their focus is on the UK political establishment and what's taking place within UK government, and they uncover some startling information. They also have an excellent grasp of the operational strategies of the European Union. They produce a daily show, the UK Column Live, and we commend it to you. Well worth paying attention to. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News.
I'll see you soon.